IHH Healthcare has submitted a confidential, conditional, non-binding and indicative proposal to acquire 100% of Ramsey Saim Darby Healthcare for 5.67 billion ringgit. Ramsey Saim Darby is an Asian joint venture equally owned by Ramsey Healthcare and Saim Darby Holdings. In a bourse filing today, IHH said the two parties have agreed to a period of exclusivity to allow IHH to conduct due diligence and negotiate a sale and purchase agreement. It said the discussions among IHH, Ramsey and Saim Darby are preliminary and no agreement had been reached in relation to the indicative proposal. It added that there is no guarantee that a deal will materialise and that it will update shareholders and the investing public on any material developments relating to the indicative proposal. IHH shares closed at 6 ringgit 51 for a market value of 57.31 billion ringgit, while Saim Darby settled at 2 ringgit 28, valuing it at 15.53 billion ringgit. Farm Fresh made a strong debut on Bursa Malaysia's main market amid active trade, soaring as much as 37.78% to 1 ringgit 86 versus its initial public offering or IPO price of 1 ringgit 35. It settled at 1 ringgit 72 for a market value of 3.12 billion ringgit. The counter, which was the most actively traded stock on the bourse today, saw 330.41 million shares traded. Farm Fresh, which is raising some 1 billion ringgit from the IPO, is Malaysia's largest listing since June 2021. Speaking at a press conference after the listing ceremony, the group's managing director and chief executive officer Loy Tuan Yi said the dairy producer may look at adjusting prices if the supply chain disruption caused by the Russia-Ukraine war continues. According to Loy, the company adjusted the price of its milk last September as it took a hit from the rise in commodity prices. As for the new minimum wage of 1,500 ringgit, the company expects it to increase its labour cost by about 1 million ringgit per annum, which would still be quite manageable. Looking ahead, Loy said Farm Fresh's performance for FY23 will be underpinned by new product launches and regional expansion. According to him, the group plans to expand to Singapore, Hong Kong, Indonesia and the Philippines. The Public Accounts Committee, or PAC, will hold a special meeting to study several cases of wastage reported in the Auditor General's Report 2020 Series 1, which was released today. According to Bernama, PAC Chairman Wong Kawa said among the cases which caught the committee's attention was the alleged leakage of 2.81 million ringgit involving the KTMB service upgrading project under the Transport Ministry. There was also another case of of wastage totaling 16.77 million ringgit involving the management of a program under the Energy and Natural Resources Ministry. A case of loss of public funds was also detected involving the control activities on hiring of expatriates program under the Home Ministry and Human Resources Ministry. The fourth case concerns LTAT's alleged failure to return government contributions, totaling 695.06 million ringgit to the retirement fund and disorderly payment of dividends. He said out of the 682 auditing issues identified, five could be subjected to punitive action and 677 involved corrective issues. Separately, Auditor General Datuk Sri Nik Azman Nik Abdul Majid revealed that non-compliance with financial management had resulted in irregular payments amounting to 1.299 billion ringgit, loss of public funds to the tune of 11.45 million ringgit, and a waste of 8.87 million ringgit to the government in 2020. According to a Bernama report, he said this during the tabling of the Auditor General's report in Parliament today. Ex Johor Court President and CEO Datuk Kamaru Zaman Abu Kasim was charged in the Johor Bahru Sessions Court with deceiving the company's board into investing 2.25 million US dollars, about 9.46 million ringgit, in two companies almost three years ago. 
According to a Bernama report, he was charged in his capacity as Johor Corp president and CEO with having cheated and dishonestly induced board members on July 8, 2019 into agreeing to create a temporary fund of 5 million US dollars. Of the sum, $1 million was invested in World Logistic Council and $1.25 million in World Logistic Council Americas. Had he informed the board of the position of the two companies, which were no longer capable of continuing their operations, the board would not have agreed to the move. The charge was framed under Section 420 of the Penal Code. If convicted, he could be sentenced to up to 10 years jail with whipping and shall also be liable to a fine. Kamaru Zaman, who retired from his posts at Johor Corp on December 12, 2019, pleaded not guilty to the charge. He was allowed bail of 150,000 ringgit with one surety and ordered to surrender his passport to the court before April 23rd after his return from performing the Umrah. The court also ordered him to report himself at the nearest MACC office and to not intimidate witnesses in the case as requested by the prosecution. The judge set April 25th for mention. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz says Malaysia's fiscal stance will remain expansionary this year. To ensure that recovery momentum is maintained, economic scarring is minimised and the economy returns to its medium-term growth trajectory. As a result, the pace of consolidation would be gradual. According to Bernama, Zafrol said this in his keynote address at the Moody's Inside ASEAN series, rising fiscal in the wake of pandemic recovery earlier today. He told attendees the government is confident of meeting its 6% deficit target this year or even lower, given the potential revenue upside from higher commodity prices as well as the recent tax revenue collection which had nearly recovered to pre-pandemic levels. He said Malaysia achieved a 6.4% deficit in 2021. Meanwhile, the federal government's debt is expected to reach 66% of gross domestic products by year-end, while statutory debt is estimated to be 63%, below the debt ceiling of 65%. Zafrol said Malaysia will also continue to prioritise domestic market issuances, including the launch of a ringgit-denominated Sustainable Development Goals instrument this year, with a targeted size of up to 10 billion ringgit. Accommodative monetary policy and a large domestic investor base would continue to support the government's funding needs.